I have a hole in my leg. Have a hole. You, let's start. Let's. I'm not even going to vamp this week. Let's just let you explain what the fuck happened. So I've had a bit of a week. Uh, I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't on the show last week because I was in the emergency room. Uh-huh. Um, what happened was Saturday. I noticed this lump on my leg. It was like that big. Kind of hurt. It was red. So I was like, all right, I'll keep an eye on it. My sister's like, yeah, it's probably a spider bite. Okay. There was no fucking way I was missing an Afghan Wakes concert for it. So I was like, fuck it. I'll just wear leggings under the dress I'm wearing. Which was the right choice because it was an amazing concert. Unbelievable. So Sunday is looking a little worse. It really starting to hurt. I'm like, all right. I have my sister look at it. She's like, all right, you know. If it's not better tomorrow, go to the ER. Monday. Now, this is two days later. It's this big. It's red, and it's huge. And I'm like, well, okay, clearly something's wrong there. So I go to the ER. They look at it. They give me a dose of IV antibiotics. Send me home with oral antibiotics. Tuesday, I take the oral antibiotics. It really hurts. Like, I'm limping at this point because I have... The, it's like expanded and now, and it's lumped, like it's like raised two inches from my, so, you know, I have a legit huge lump. By Wednesday, I could not walk and it had formed a black abscess the size of the original lump. I had a black Lupus. abscess like this big. Lupus. So I went back to the ER. <laughs> ER doc comes in, looks at me for, I swear, like 10 seconds and goes, yeah, we're going to admit you. Okay. Yeah, when I've never parts been admitted of, to when, the hospital before. When parts of you start turning black, that's a good time to admit you to the ER. Yeah. So admitted me. I I saw so many doctors. I have I now have to follow up with a plastic surgeon, mm-hmm. a wound care specialist, mm-hmm. an infectious disease specialist. Like so finally, you know this is getting worse and worse and worse and it's oozing and it's disgusting. So finally the surgeon comes in to look at it and he goes, yeah, it's going to have to be lanced and drained. And he says, well, we can do this one of two ways. He said, you just had lunch, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, we bring you to the OR. You're going to have to wait till tonight. Or we could just give you a local and do it right here. And you were in such pain. You're just like fucking cut me open. It's like, well, Okay, so they threw some morphine in my IV, shot the whole area of my leg full of local, and sliced my fucking leg open. And that's when I heard the worst two words I have ever heard in my entire life. Necrotic Necrotic fat. fat. I didn't even know that was a thing, but it sounds amazing. That's a thing that can happen to you. That's a band name. In your body can go necrotic and die and turn black. That is a screamo band name right there. So they clean all the crud out. Now, basically, and then they took a culture of the crud they took out of it, forgot to tell me, by the way, you have MRSA. Yeah, they just, they're all coming in in the contamination gowns. Yeah, all of a sudden, everybody's coming in in gowns. And I'm like, okay. So I asked someone, I'm like, why is everyone? wearing gowns all of a sudden is something going on yeah there's some kind of precaution okay and i haven't left my room so i don't know if there's a precaution on the floor right the day i the day i was admitted they had the local news there because there was an ebola scare locally (laughs) so it makes better what's going on finally like 10 o'clock at night i asked the night nurse listen all of a sudden everybody's wearing gowns what's the deal with that and she goes oh well you're under contact precaution what does that mean and she's like, well, because of the MRSA. And I'm like, I have MRSA? Yeah, nobody told you that? <laughs> no. No, nobody, nobody mentioned that I have MRSA. <laughs> That's a good thing to know. Thanks for the heads up. MRSA is, oh God, what's it? It's a MRSA. It's something. Antibiotic resistant staff. Resistant yeah. staff. Whatever. It's basically a staph infection that is resistant to your usual round of antibiotics. The good thing for me is I'm allergic to penicillin, which is the usual round of antibiotics that it's resistant to. So they hadn't even put me on that anyway. I was already on the the serious shit. But so basically the long and short of it is it looks like somebody took a melon baller 
to my leg, like two inches below my knee. Yeah, when we say I, it, when you say it's one point five inches, it's not just across; it's also deep. deep. It's about an inch and a half deep. So now my daily nightmare, my daily hell is I have to get this wound irrigated, packed and dressed every day, which means there's a bunch of antibiotic treated gauze stuffed into this bloody, disgusting, raw hole in my leg, which hurts. Uh, well, it doesn't it doesn't so much hurt. Really, the leg doesn't hurt that much anymore. But the thing is, because it's antibiotic treated, it tingles pretty much all the time. Like, you know, that feeling of when you pour peroxide on a wound? Yeah, that, that bubbly kind of... My leg feels like that all the time. <laughs> On the inside. An inch inside my leg tingles all the time. Weird as shit ever. Most people have to do some amazing drugs for that sensation. But once a day, I have to go and someone has to pull all that crap out, which is a horrible feeling. And then sometimes, if I'm really lucky, they poke at it with a Q-tip, which is incredibly painful. Or like today, the doctor ripped off all the fresh scabs with forceps. Then they irrigate it, they pour salt water through it, and then they stuff more of that stuff in, and then wrap it all up. And that's my life right now, at least for, there's, I keep asking them, like, how long am I going to be doing this routine? And they're like, well, you know, it has to fill from the bottom up. And I'm like, yes, I understand that. How long is it going to be red and oozing and, like, really painful if someone breathes on it? Well, we don't really know. Okay. We don't know. It's a mystery. Us my here with medical science. Was, like, and banned from my room because I'm infectious. Aww. Which my sister was so sweet. Like, she was so worried about offending me, telling me that. She's like, I'm really sorry. I'm like, he's a nine-year-old kid. Like, this happens to him. They chop off his leg. That's so awesome. He I, might I, think that's awesome for like 10 minutes, but it really He's isn't. offered to dress the wound for me every day. Aww. He watched them clean and dress it the day they discharged me, and he was actually disappointed that the hole wasn't bigger. Eight-year-olds are amazing. A hole in my leg the size of a ping-pong ball was not enough to impress nope. this little boy. So, And they only had Shasta Cola. <laughs> <laughs> but you sent me oh, lovely no. cookies and made some poor baker write, sorry, you're infectious on a cookie. Well, you know... I've got I, which a lot of the nurses got a kick out of. Like people would keep coming into the room and go, "Does that say sorry you're in?" <laughs> like, yeah, it does. I have some of your friends. I got really cool flowers that were sculpted to look like a puppy. <clears throat> I got a weird bear that sings, "You are the wind beneath my wings," because Dan kind of made friends with the gift shop lady because he's far away, so he would just call the gift shop and be like, "Send her something cute." So I got a little bear that sings You Are the Wind Beneath My Wings, which Bridget is not impressed with at all. Um, but yeah, Pat, Pat today, because my insurance isn't covering the visiting nurse care that I'm supposed to have every day to dress this wound, so we're figuring out what to do. He's like, I could do it for you. I have a pocket knife. I'm a scout. I'm like, yeah. No, no thanks. You're not covered on my insurance, Pat. I'm like, I, I, I love you. You're a sweet boy. You're, you're out not, of... Pat, you're, you're not out, touching the hole in my leg. Pat, you're out of network. I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're out of network. So, so now now I get the whole nightmare of insurance and the giant bills that are about to come and however many months it takes for the hole in my leg to fill in because I'm going to have a hole in my leg for a really long time. And the plastic surgeon tried to convince me that I'm not going to have a scar. And I'm like, buddy, there's a hole in my leg. You just cut a hole in my leg. It's an inch deep and an inch across. Like, there's going to be a scar. Now that, that we're on the subject of health-related matters, we've got some stories about oh, health-related matters because it's... So I think that's going to count as everybody's Tara story for the week. You can take your shot now. Yeah. Because I don't think I'm going to top that with well, any witty anecdotes. In America this week, we've been having a wonderful freaking the fuck out in all our entirety about uh, health care. Let's, uh, let, let, let's, let's go ahead and get the intro started here. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for the segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And this week, 
It's been the Ebola follies across America. I no, I watched a lot of I watched a lot of CNN while I was sitting in the hospital because take day ten days hell over on terrible and it was pretty much all the bull all the time. All the bull all the time. Well, and by the way, anybody the joke about do I have superpowers because I got bit by a spider has only been made about six hundred times. Only six hundred, so you know. We've got another, what, four hundred to go? So. Yeah. Um speaking of the news in relation to Ebola. Uh, they've been covering the story. They've been getting very close to the story. And as you have been talking about, quarantine is important in these sort of, of circumstances. Except, of course, if you're the media, in which case, I guess they think they're immune. NBC News correspondent Dr. Yeah. Nancy Snyderman leaves a statement after breaking quarantine to get takeaway. TV doctor who broke her quarantine for possible Ebola to sneak out to get takeaway from her favorite restaurant has issued an apology of sorts. Dr. Nancy Snyderman and her NBC News crew were all under quarantine after returning from, to the U.S. from West Africa where they're exposed to an inspected, infected cameraman, uh, Ashoka Mukbo, I think that's how it says. Uh, but the network's chief medical correspondent, which allegedly spotted breaking her quarantine to make a food run to a New Jersey restaurant. To make matters worse, Snyderman issued a statement in which she failed to say sorry or take responsibility for her actions. The statement, uh, while under voluntary quarantine guidelines, which called for our team to avoid public contact for 21 days, members of our group violated those guidelines and understand that our quarantine is now mandatory until 21 days have passed. We remain healthy and temperatures normal. Normal. She also said, as a health professional, I know we have no so symptoms and pose no risks to the public, but I am deeply sorry for the concerns this episode caused. You fucking... I don't have any symptoms. I'm fine. And I'm a doctor, so I should know. <clears throat> 21 day incubation period. On a bowl. Mm -hmm. So just because you're not running a temperature today, like this is why the whole thing at the airports is so stupid. They're taking temperatures at the airports. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Meaningless. Yep. It's what we, we've talked about it before. It's the illusion of safety. We're really, really good at doing things to make it look like we're doing things that are not actually effective at all. Have you ever read The Stand? No. You should, because number one, every time you get a fever, you'll immediately freak the fuck out. Forever. Good. I need that in my life right Forever. Now. Because I get my temperature taken six times a day. And two, the, it's it's an outbreak of a, of a disease that kills 99% of the population. But people are fine for a while because they think it's just the flu and they have flu buddy. So they think, you know, oh, I, it's just the sniffles. It's not this horrible disease. I'm okay. I'm different. I'm special. It's not me. Hello. And that's the thing. 21-day incubation period means on day 20... You could spike that fever. Yep. On day, it two, doesn't mean that if you ha don't have the fever on day seven, you're cool. It means day fucking twenty, you could spike that fever. And so she wandered around, and it is not easy to catch a bullet. It's not like airborne. It's it's right. you have to be. It's blood or fecal matter or that that has to have contact with. You know, it's it's not easy to get it, but it is transmittable. Which means anything could have fucking happened to her. Say she was walking down the street and tripped. And like hit something and, and cut herself and there's blood everywhere and someone rushes to help her. Yeah. That's why they have quarantine just in case. Because this is like little accidental shit can happen. This is the media. These are the people who are supposed to tell you not about this, not be stupid. They'd be stupid. I am currently limping talking proof that shit can just happen. Mm -hmm. You got a spider bite, and then, you know, a week later... And then my leg exploded. You have a hole in your leg. there's a hole in it. In a week. But something else this Ebola thing has also taught us. We, we, we all know there are certain words you don't say in the airport when you're... Oh, you know, this fucking guy. You don't say, I have a bomb. You don't say any... Ter you don't say terrorist. You don't say They're just things you don't fucking say. We've learned a new one. Don't say, I have Ebola. Link. Certainly don't follow that up with you're all screwed. Yes, that is the quote. A guy got on a plane and said the words, I have Ebola, you're all screwed. Director of Operations at the airport of Punta Cana 
reported that the rumor concerning a pastor coming from Philadelphia affected with a lethal disease known as Ebola was false. Um, oh my god, this guy's name. Walter Zemiokowski. Zemiokowski? Zemiokowski. Looks like it. Walter Zemiokowski, however, said that if the, it was the passenger who himself announced that he was affected by the disease of the moment, causing the isolation of the aircraft and the intervention of a metal, medical team which ran into the aircraft in hazmat suits. Quote, I have Ebola. You are all screwed, the bothersome pastor was supposed to have said. Um, security personnel de detained the pastor, took him to the medical health area where he was submitted to a rigorous checkup. Okay. And will then be sent to jail for causing a public panic and fucking with the FAA. And you know, there are easier ways to get people to stick all their fingers up your butt. Yeah. Than screaming, I have Ebola. It's, there's in just, public. you could just get that on Craigslist. Because that's exactly what happened to this guy. Every hole he had, they put something in. And not fun things. And as someone who had to have four different IV sites in a day because my veins at one point just decided, fuck you, leave us alone. And it's not as fun as it sounds. And they made new holes, too. I'm covered in rashes from medical tape because I'm actually allergic to medical tape. I break out in a rash. So they're like, they, they keep asking me if I have any rashes as checking to see if I'm having a reaction to the antibiotics. And I'm like, yes, but it's from the tape. <laughs> because... I'm covered in medical tape, and I'm allergic to it. But it's not as fun as it sounds. The, the free silkwood shower and all. No! Decontamination? Not super fun. And, and just, there is, I, we can't, I couldn't find anything in the story about why he decided this was a good idea. No. Because he's an asshole. And he thought, this will be, probably, this will be funny. People don't, people don't understand how seriously they need to take shit on airplanes these days. Oh yeah, they do not fuck around. They don't fuck around in the friendly, it's not the friendly skies anymore. No, no, it's the turn your head, it's, it's the bend over and spread them skies. Yeah. And you know, the, the in-flight movie is, a, is not fun either. <laughs> can you hear her purring? She's purring so loud in my lap right oh, now. No, I cannot hear her. I really missed Bridget while I was gone. I was very happy to see her when I came home. We're going to move on to um, news of work. Jobs. Jobs, they be getting us down. I've, I've had jobs that have, have annoyed the crap out of me. Are we going to do the leech thing? No. No. But uh, we are going to do... Um, I, I've had jobs that have annoyed the crap out of me. And I have often thought of doing this very thing. However, I didn't do it. And you know why? Because I don't like jail. Unfortunately, this kid did not have the... Oh, where's the page? This kid did not have the same compunction. Well, fine, then. Page, where are you? I will just swap you with the actual one, then. Ah, you're ruining my set. Thank you, Express Mail. You're ruining my set today. All right, here we go. Uh, the link's not I, I working. Have page. You have the page? I didn't have the page. Why was it doing it? Bored work experience girl set fire to hardware store causing one million pounds worth of damage. And, and, and the, the operable quote in this story is bored. Now, if you're not in England, um, the work experience thing is when you get to a certain point in high school, you can opt to go to, well, they don't have high school. They have like, Second, I think yeah, second. you have to test to get into the equivalent of high school. And if you do, you're going to go to college forever for free if you want. If you don't, you go to like vocational school and learn a trade. Right. And they have the option to send you to a school to learn this. So she went, uh, the teenager who was on placement at the Wilkins store from a fee paying private school, started the blaze with a cigarette lighter. Warwick Crown Court heard that the quote, intelligent student set fire to waste cardboard in a cage in the goods inward bay because she was fed up of stacking shelves. And wanted to go home. Forever? <laughs> because you don't get to go back to your job tomorrow if no! you get down. And this is a thing I've thought about. I've worked some <laughs> fucking terrible jobs. And I wish for the place to burn down. And then gone, you know, 
then I don't get a job tomorrow. Yeah, it's not like, what happened, Cindy? Oh, well, you know, like, I set some stuff on fire. All right, you going home. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, it's okay. it's not like no. it just auto-regenerates. It's not a video game. It doesn't just regenerate when you reset. I have had, I've done retail. It's boring sometimes. And it's boring because they have that, that mentality of, if you're, if you're, if you have enough time to stand still, you have enough time to be doing something else. If you can lean, you can clean. Yeah. Doesn't matter if your feet are about to literally fall off your body and you're in my, and you're in crushing amounts of pain. You go scrub something. So I can understand. And smile at somebody who's mean to you. But. This is where kids are today. If they're bored, they set shit on fire. Yeah. I would love to be a kid now. That sounds like fun. Is that, Isn't that pretty much what you do? You set your own leg on fire. Well, that was an accident. If it had been on purpose, it would have been different, but I didn't plan for it. Okay, uh, John the Wizard. This isn't what they mean by heat-treated lumber. Nice. Nice. It's hot job opportunity. <laughs> and you get in trouble. I just don't understand how the whole consequences thing. Yeah, arson is almost never the answer. Almost. 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 Almost never the answer. There are occurrences where it is. I mean, with this leg, I've had thoughts. You've had thoughts. Get me an axe and some matches and let's fucking do this thing. But it, almost it, never the answer. I, I did not think anyone could top that in a work related issue this week. But oh, no, someone did. I'm not one to talk because of the wiener dog. I didn't set the wiener dog on fire. No, that your was dad my dad. Did. Your dad set the wiener dog on fire. My dad set the dog's ass on fire. I've <laughs> never set a living creature on fire in my life. That's a non sequitur there. It wasn't me. My dad set the dog's ass on fire. And he didn't mean to. But and no, the dog was fine. But in terms of disgruntled employees, this guy wins this week. <coughs> Boy, does he fucking win this week. Disgruntled employee takes off with Wyoming <coughs> train. Should let oh. Wyoming. I already say a disgruntled employee. Common they have train tracks in Wyoming? <laughs> They're really coming up. Disgruntled employee commandeered a locomotive from a northeast Wyoming coal mine and later plowed it into another train before oh. he was apprehended. They say the 22-year-old man faces preliminary charges that include reckless endangerment and felony destruction. The incident began before 9 a.m. Uh, when the employee became upset with a supervisor over working conditions. The employee unhooked some cars from a train and drove the locomotive off the mine property and ran into a main rail line. Uh, he took the train about 13 miles south before crashing into another train. Miraculously, no injuries were reported. Total cost of the damages were not immediately available. I feel like this is the Michael Bay movie version of Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Topham Hat, this time it's personal. <laughs> Oh my god. For fuck's sake. Going off the rails on a crazy train. Literally. Literally. I have had you had see you have these ideas sometimes. Like I've seen like a construction site and there's like a bulldozer sitting there and going, you know, no one's around. I could probably drive away on that. But you don't do it! I've never had that thought. Never? You've never, never. seen like it's there. It's like, I could, that would be fun. But uh, you I don't do it! Never had that thought. Not even once. Emily asks, how do you get away on a train? Probably with both middle fingers extended. Yeah, I mean... What are you gonna do? Oh, well, they do know exactly where you're going. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's not like you're... It's a mystery. Yeah, it's not like you can make a sharp left. <laughs> they know in exactly fact, where you're in going. In fact, they can control where you're going. <laughs> and he crashed into another train. 
Man, that Thomas. other guy was Michael Bay's Thomas the Tank. Yeah. <laughs> How pissed off do you gotta be? Pretty pissed off. This is like this is way past that the airline attendant who popped the slide and, and fucked off with the champagne. <laughs> this is way past that shit. Yeah. Because he didn't steal the plane. Right. He didn't just decide to fly off to Cabo. Where was he going? I'm going home on a train. No, we're not. Grand Theft Locomotive. They should make that a feature in the game. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto a billion should be, you should be able you to just steal the train, yeah. train uh, and tie a hooker to the tracks for extra awfulness. Uh, well, moving along, we, we often say on this show about the new drugs show up, and we often say the old drugs still work. And having been on Percocet for a few days, I can attest. Except sometimes even the old drugs are kind of scary. This guy certainly made the most of his weekend. Man on acid demanded homemakers make him a sandwich, take him to McDonald's drive-thru. And that, both? that headline is just the tip of the iceberg. Why do you need both? Because this wasn't one day. This was a week-long acid trip. Uh... Huh? George Jacobson, 23, is charged with multiple crimes, including robbery, kidnapping, burglary, and theft of a firearm. Um, police became aware of Jacobson on September 26 when they received two calls from the homes. Uh, first victim told police he walked into his bar to find a man holding a single black rubber boot. The victim asked what he was doing, and Jacobson walked outside, bent down, and put his hands in the air. Jacobson was told he would, when the victim... Did he wave them like he just did? <laughs> Victim said he would sick his dogs on him. Jacobson ran off, ran to the neighboring house. There, a female homeowner spotted him inside, and Jacobson allegedly drew a gun. Jacobson did not make sense, the victim told police, and kept talking about the woman's neighbor, repeating the words, mean neighbor. The woman then tried to de-escalate the solution and asked Jacobson what he wanted. Jacobson allegedly demanded a sandwich. The woman made him one. While he ate... He allegedly showed the woman a black boot, saying he was on a spiritual duty, and the boot contained his jewels. <laughs> his jewels? I don't know. It gets worse. The, um, baby. He was not heard from again until the morning of October 3rd. He was inspired at going through a car. He left various items, such as knives, inside the vehicle and ran off. Here it goes. Found later standing in the home uh, of uh, the 3500 block of 42nd uh, Avenue Street. Jacobson was holding some of the homeowner's personal items, such as wallet and keys. He then allegedly flew, fled it. She, he then allegedly fled into her Honda, stole the car, and crashed it into a ditch. From the crashed car, he allegedly entered another home. He demanded the victim give him a ride at gunpoint. The victim complied. And Jacobson told the victim to pull through a McDonald's drive through for a soft drink. Again, the victim complied. Later, Jacobson told police he preferred meth, but recently took a batch of acid. The acid caused him a bad trip. The only thing he could call from the week before was taking a person's car and being driven through a drive through by a, quote, nice man. <laughs> I think you'll find most people are nice when you have them at gunpoint. <laughs> wow! How, how do you even get on a week-long acid trip? Is that one hit? Does that happen? What I'm wondering is why he didn't pay someone to follow him with a video camera. This shit is YouTube gold. But does that happen? Like, you take acid once and you're fucked up for days? I don't I've know. I've never taken acid. I don't know how acid works. I don't know how acid works either. That seems like a bad idea. Yeah. As or really cost effective. <laughs> the channel. One of the, uh, Lax Doty's, one of the few times you can actually recommend meth over something else. Yeah. They, they tell me acid can last for a few days. That's scary. Oh. Uh. 
Like once or twice in my life, I've done the thing where I wake up still drunk and that's fucking horrible. Yeah. Cause you're like, whoa, isn't this shit over yet? And then I usually immediately start puking. Cause if I fall asleep drunk, yeah, it's all over. But like that is bad enough. Like the waking up still drunk. <laughs> But the losing a week of your life to sheer crazy. He had a boot that contained his jewels and he was on a spirit shelter. Like <laughs> waking up with the rhino's head on a playmate's body still in bed next to you. That's worse. I, don't, I didn't think we could top this one this week. But we can. We, we actually, we can. Is the one I just sent you? No, I, I think it's, it's, well, what the, no, 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 no. This one is, this one, this one is awful. And get ready to be angry and be amazed no one is dead. That's, this is one of those stories where you're both pissed off and amazed there were no fatalities. I would not be reporting on this if there were fatalities. But this is one of those holy shit moments. Delaware mother charged after four-year-old brings heroin to daycare. This is like the third time we've done a story like this. And look, that picture, that picture is from the daycare. Oh. All of that heroin was at the daycare. Okay, because when we've done it before, it's like the kid slipped one pack in his pocket oh. for show and tell. Police have arrested the mother of a four-year-old girl after the child allegedly brought daycare her into the daycare center and started to pass it out to other classmates. Well, at least she understood the value of sharing. True. <clears throat> Ashley Tull, 30, of Shelbyville, Delaware, was charged with maintaining a drug property and three counts of endangering the welfare of a child. Uh, authorities t said that medical personnel responded to daycare shortly before noon after workers saw some of the children with small bags of an unknown substance. Investigators said the substance was tested at the police station and turned to be heroin. Police say the girl inadvertently brought the bags of heroin in a backpack that Tell had been given at her after the girl's regular backpack was ruined by a family pet. Authorities say the child thought the packets were candy and began passing them out to other students. Several children were taken to the hospital's precautionary measure and were released after being examined. Everyone was fine. Total of 249 bags of heroin weighing 3.735 grams was located in the backpack. When you're a parent, you have certain responsibilities. Like, find the dog peas on your kid's backpack. You've got to figure out a new backpack. Like, you have to make sure everybody gets the right lunch. So little Timmy who eats bologna doesn't get little Susie's bologna sandwich. He has certain responsibilities. One of those responsibilities is if your kid needs to change out her backpack, you make sure you don't leave your 200 plus bags of heroin in it. How do you even fit actual preschool shit in that bag? Like, where did they, how do you open that bag to put in the crayons and not notice the 200 plus bags of heroin? Mommy gave me candy. Who won it? That she, you know what? That's she's a sweet little four year old. Yeah, she, she didn't know. She finds candy in her backpack and's like, "Everybody have some candy." I did bring enough for the whole class, actually. <laughs> Don't bite me. That's not nice. But you know, it's a wonderful. Don't bite me. You'll get MRSA. It's wonderful. The little kid was just like, "Oh, the, the sweet little kid." It's just it's unfortunate that it's heroin. That's I mean, a I lot of heroin. In some context, you could call that candy, but not when you're full. No, that's a lot of heroin. That's a lot. It's it's an excessive amount of heroin. Why are you biting me when I'm petting you? Because. Stop that. Because. That's a lot of fucking heroin. <laughs> Daddy always said, first one's free. Oh, that's horrible. She did bring enough to share with the class, though. <laughs> she did. That's and that's that's considerate of her. When you that's know, important. It's important school etiquette. This this it's not that much heroin. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. 
you it's know, that much heroin. You know, stories like this could go one of two ways. This could have been a fucking tragedy. Yeah, this could have been a school full of dead kids. Yes! What the fuck, lady? This shit ain't toys! You gotta watch the... You know what? No, you don't have to watch the shit. You should not be doing this! I think I've mentioned before that I was terrified of the Incredible Hulk as a child. So my mom, in she had a shoebox in the upper cabinet where all like the medicines were kept. Mm -hmm. And that shoebox was covered in Incredible Hulk stickers to keep me the fuck out of it. So the Incredible Hulk was like terror repellent. Yeah, so that I wouldn't mistake them for candy. Ow! Motherfucker! Come on! Stop that! It's not ladylike. So that I wouldn't mistake, you know, medicine for candy and die. <laughs> got to move the camera so you guys can see. She's just attached to Tara. It's like I have a Bridget puppet. Uh. Oh, we lost it, huh? She's getting declawed this week. Oh, uh, aw. No, it wasn't my idea. I fought it, but I lost. Aww. So this is the last time you're able to do this. Enjoy it while it lasts, Kitty. So yeah, that... That just, that. How? <laughs> I guess the first thing that we learned is sometimes sharing. We're really not going to do Leech Lady? All right. Where's the, where's the, where, where's the Leech I lady? sent it to you in Earth. This is important because this might be the dumbest bitch I've ever seen. The... <sighs> well, damn, girl. She had a three inch leech up her nose for a month and didn't notice. It squicked out her nose down to her lip when she'd shower. And I don't know, she thought it was a booger or something. And this is BBC News, so this ain't bullshit. She was getting regular nosebleeds and thought it was because she fell off a motorbike a month ago. Having a shower last Thursday when she realized the dark shape wriggling in her nose was actually an animal. A three-inch leech. Even when she felt it moving up and down her nostrils, she thought it was a blood clot. A blood clot with suction. And the thing is, if you had a blood clot in your nose for a month, wouldn't you go to a doctor anyway? I would. Oh my this god. So I like either this chick is lying mm. or she's incredibly stupid. And they said like another couple weeks and the leech would have made its way to her brain and just started sucking the blood from her brain. She went which she, it might have starved to death. She went to accident and emergency where doctors removed quote Mr. Curly as Miss Liverani nicknamed the leech with forceps and tweezers. And can you imagine? Like, I've been through some terrible medical shit in the past week, but, like, they're just reaching up your nose and fuses and pulling. She named it? And what if they just rip it in half? <laughs> what if it doesn't come out and just half of it comes out? I could kind of see it out of the corner of my eye, but still didn't think it was a worm because it just looked like a blood clot. <clears throat> If you had a blood clot that big in your nose, wouldn't you get it looked at anyway? Like, there's, I, either she is lying or the dumbest person I have ever. This is idiocracy made real. This is, this is a problem. This is a fucking, cause not only did she go like, oh, I had a leech up my nose. I didn't know it. I'm gonna name it. Yeah. For a month. A month. Who thinks getting nosebleeds for a month and having shit wriggle out of your nose while you're in the shower is normal? What's your day to day? <laughs> the first thing we learned this week is 
shit should not be moving in your nose of its own accord. No. We learned that sometimes sharing is not such a good thing. Sometimes. We've learned that sometimes, yes, we still have the old drugs, but even some of those are scary. Yeah. God damn, if you're out of that shit for a week, that's not a good time. No, no, no. That stops being a good time around day two, I would imagine. We learn when your options are quit or steal a train. Steal a train is not the good choice. Just, yeah, just give you notice. Also, we've learned that when the options are quit or set the place on fire... Just give you notice. Quit still wins. Just give your notice. Just take this job and shove it. We've learned that people in the media are not as smart as they should be, or we'd like to think they are. Yeah. And finally, we've learned new things not to yell on an airplane. That being, I have Ebola, you're all you're screwed. You're all screwed. It's the you're all screwed that just puts it over the line from idiot into dick. Like, you could have been just an idiot, but actually you're a dick. No, no, you are an imbecile. You are an asshole, sir. I hear you. I'm on the internet right now. Uh, Do you see the internet? Is yes, it I ham? hear you. Is it ham? Mm -hmm. If not, then I do not see it. Yeah, pretty much. You got so much chicken today and you're still yelling at me. <laughs> well, yeah, well, she's probably happy to see you, but gone for a week. Yeah, I left her for four days. She came in to my room when I came home and was like... And there she launched herself. We saw the butt wiggle and everything. You missed it. It was beautiful. What are you... She likes to box your cookies came in. Awesome. Planted herself right in that box and glared at me for a while. Awesome. Then I lay down to watch Captain America and take a nap and she curled up right on my chest and was like, okay, I forgive you. I have Ebola. You're all screwed. E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> I have MRSA. You're all, you're all pretty much fine. You're on the internet. <laughs> and I think at this point, like my aunt who used to be a nurse is like, you should be on isolation. And I'm like, I've been on antibiotics, heavy duty shit for four days. Like, I think at this point you would have to like stick your finger in the hole in my leg and then go like this. Which, why would you do that? And I'm not going to let you. So <laughs> mostly I think it's pretty much cool. There's a mental image that's just good. Everybody's just like, well, we're done. <laughs> There's at least two people jerking off to that right now. 